Good morning folks, it is Thursday morning, it is the 14th of May and we are reading this morning from Acts chapter 10. Let's read God's word together. In Caesarea there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout God-fearing man. As was everyone in his household, he gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming towards him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? The angel replied, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now, send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called out the two of the household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them to Joppa. The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry. But while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet was all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. And then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up. Go downstairs and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I am the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, We were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day he went with them, accompanied by some of the men, the brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him and said, Stand up. I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. Peter told them, You know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile's home like this or to associate with him. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. Cornelius replied, Four days ago, I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. So he is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once. And it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favouritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him to do and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel. That there is peace with God through Jesus Christ who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God 
was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all that he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. And then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen and advanced to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to everywhere um, and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on Gentiles too. For they had heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptised, now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptised in the name of Jesus. Afterwards, Cornelius asked them to stay with them for several days. Amen. End of Acts chapter 10. Again, another interesting story um, in the early church. Another story of God at work. Um, there are lots of different things that you could say from this chapter. You could spend weeks upon weeks taking it apart and looking at it. Uh, one thing that sort of stands out and strikes me is just how God works and how God uses all different people in different ways. But at each stage, none of them have the insight of knowing about the others, really, or knowing what's going on. Cornelius is told to send for Peter, doesn't really know why. Peter has a vision, he doesn't understand the reason for that vision. Uh, and then he's just told to go with those men. Something that would have been really scary, there's a soldier amongst them, personal guard. Um, they're being summoned by a, a Roman officer. Again, something not very nice, usually something that um, was a, followed by arrest and torture. And yet, they follow, and yet he does what's told. There's others go with him as well, so he's not all alone in that danger. But each time they only know a little bit of God's plan, but God has everything in place for everything to work out the way he wants it to. And it's the same with us. Um, I often talk, and I've often said uh, in church about how God has the master plan and we only get to see a little part of it. And that is so true. God knows everything. God is in control ultimately. Uh, he knows how everything comes together. We don't. And that's why we walk by faith and not by sight, just as the hymn says. Uh, we have to trust. And even during this time of crisis, we have to trust God. And, and what, no matter what crisis is going on in our own lives, Aside from the coronavirus, we have to trust God because he's the one who holds it all and he's the one who knows. So today, I don't know what sort of day you've had, what sort of week you've had so far. I don't know what sort of day you're going to have today. I don't know if everything's going to fall into place for you or if it's going to be a frustrating day whenever things just go completely array. Um, or if it'll be a mediocre day, you know, yeah, it's all right, you know, who knows. But in the midst of all of that, just remember... God holds you and God has that plan. Just trust him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you again for a, a bright morning, for sunshine, for food that you have given us with, for clothes that you have blessed us with. And Lord, just for your, your practical provision this day already, we thank you for that. Lord, you do hold all the different parts and pieces of the plan. And you're the only one who sees all of that. Just help us to trust you, Father. Just help us to rely upon you um, as you bring everything and weave it all together and knit it together into your master um, picture. Lord, for those who are struggling, for those who are bereaved, for those who have got loved ones who are not well this time, Lord, just be with them and be near them and help them this day. Help all of us to have our eyes open uh, and our ears tuned in to you and to those who are around us so that we would see what is happening and that we can be involved in a practical way. Lord, continue with us. This day we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Thanks, folks, for um, watching. Thanks for joining in. Uh, as always, please stay safe. And as always, I, uh, I pray that you would know God's blessing today and always. Thanks. See you again tomorrow. Bye.